here's the trailer uh, in its raw form. This is the way I sell them. I don't sell them finished. These are really, really simple to assemble. So um, anyone should really, you should have really good fortune putting this together on your own. Does come with choice of wheels. So you can get two hole buds, 10 hole chromes, uh, two hole chrome, five hole white. Your choice is yours. So when you get your trailer, it's gonna come just like this, okay? And then this cap over here may or may not be attached to the tank like this. This will have to go in the back of this trailer. And the reason this hole is in here is to make this hollow. And the reason we want it hollow is it costs less if this is not a giant chunk of resin. So that's the reason to make that part hollow. You'll notice right away that the end cap does not fit in there very well. That's no worry. If you've got a round file, like so, you can wrap a piece of sandpaper around a round file. You can actually, if you don't have a file, you can just roll this tight around any round object or even roll it on itself like so. And you want it small enough to go into the hole, of course which that I didn't roll it tight enough, but a round file or just roll this piece of sandpaper really tight, one of the two. You could actually use a round file to make, make this hole just a little bit bigger. This is the easiest way to get the cap to fit. You could sand the cap, but that it's just hard to hold because it's so small. Anyways, the goal here is to take your sandpaper, a file or anything, and we're just gonna, our goal here is to make this just a little bit bigger so the cap slides in easy. Like so. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then you're good to go. I have noticed what looks like a top and a bottom on this. I'm not really certain, actually. I've never been close enough to a, vac a real vacuum trailer to know if uh, this cap has a top or a bottom, but what appears to be a top is on the cap. And you don't have to make your cap fit that tight. That's not necessary. It doesn't have to fit that tight. Make it fit so it's easy to assemble. There's a little square piece right here at the top of this end cap. So you'll notice all these latches around the side. And then there's this little square piece. I've been putting that at the top. To be perfectly honest, as I said, I don't know if that's correct or not. And then you can just use a little bit of glue and... Apply it. You don't need much glue, especially if you, if it's tight, you don't need a whole lot of glue. And there's that top. And I'm just going to spin that. Well, I guess I won't. Never mind. There. And that square piece is kind of at the top. That's what I want. Next, as I mentioned, that cap is attached by a wire right here at the back of the trailer. So we have a little stub right there where that wire was. Take your sandpaper again, wrap it around a flat surface like a file, a small file if you have one, and then just sand that off. It sands really easy, so that won't be a problem for you. And then Rub your finger over it. Once it's smooth, you're good to go. And let's see if we can get this over here on the other side. You can see that there's no, no more of that wires left. It's all gone. Okay, now your trailer's ready to prime and paint. What I like to do is wipe these all down with 
Rubbing alcohol gets any impurities, just prevents fish eye is what happens. Sometimes if, there, if there's a contaminant on there, you'll put your paint on it and there will be a little white. It looks like a hole almost where the, the contaminant is not letting the paint cover or the primer. So I just dip it in rubbing alcohol, wipe it, let it air dry, and then prime and paint color of choice. What colors are these? Uh, traveling through Oklahoma and Texas, I see these every color under the sun, primarily white, but I've seen them blue, I've seen them red, seen them two-tone. Choice is really up to you. I paint them white for just to keep it easy. Okay, once you've painted it, now you're ready to assemble the wheels. Again, like I said at the beginning, wheels of choice are two-hole, five-hole white, uh, 10 hole chrome and uh, two hole chrome. And then of course there's a no wheel option if you've already got wheels that you wanna use. Now, you can use this trailer as is. However, your trailer will also come with the choice of a catwalk. This catwalk goes on the driver's side like this. Now you might be wondering, Eric, what is, that doesn't look like a catwalk, and that's correct. This structure around the catwalk is designed to keep it from breaking during shipping. This is something I've had done with other parts that are brittle and fragile. Just goes a long way to keep, keep this intact, and it also helps to prevent it from warping too. Here's the actual handrail for the catwalk. This is it here. And here and here you can kind of see how it bends down to this step and then you have the catwalk itself so these wires holding this catwalk straight or this handrail straight are what need to be cut use your flat side cutters if you don't have them I sell them in my store you can buy them about anywhere online as well I've also found, let me see, is that attached? It works really well if you just remove this framing in sections, like so. That works just to kind of get it out of the way right away. And if there's any bits of the wire still left over, come in and clean those up, trim them off. Now, I painted this before I, I, I already painted this, you know, so there are going to be little spots of unpainted handrail. If that bothers you, go ahead and remove all of this framing, remove it, and then leave like one or two bits of wire like this. I come in here and leave, and then you can stick this in your helping hands or whatever it is you use to hold when you paint, hold your item when you paint it. Then if you just leave a couple of odd wires for your helping hands, then you can come back and trim them and then no one will see them on the bottom. Okay, so that's, that's your workaround. And I'm just gonna cut that at right there. Okay, flipping it over to this handrail right here goes clear down to the trailer. So we want to cut this right there and we want to cut it right here and here. And we're gonna cut that. There we go. Got rid of that. I cut that? Yep, I did. Good. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and trim that off. Now it's really becoming evident this is a, an actual handrail.
and it'll help if I keep this right where you can see it in the shot. Okay, this is what the handrail should look like right here. Unfortunately, there are some little dimples right here. You can kind of see those right there. You can see them really well. This is left over from the printing process. If that bothers you, you can come in with a piece of, piece of fine sandpaper and sand that gently if that bothers you. I normally don't get too worked up about that because my, on my layout, I, I really don't notice it and I just look at it from afar. So I just leave these, but of course, you're welcome to come in here and sand that as you wish. Just be gentle with it. These aren't, uh, this is an updated version of this particular handrail because the first one, while it was dead on accurate for 164 scale, it was just simply too brittle and it was very difficult to handle without breaking. So I asked my designer to uh, make the handrail here a little thicker, which makes it much more user friendly than the previous version. And of course, you're welcome to come in and sand any of this off that you want down here on the catwalk. And uh, like I'd mentioned previously, if it bothers you to have this unpainted stub left over from the wire, remove all of this railing, leave one or two uh, wires for your helping hand so it'll hold it while you paint it, then paint the thing, prep it, do everything you want to do, and then um, you're ready to go to, a, to put it on. After the handrail is ready to go, you are really close to putting this thing on your trailer. I want to draw your attention to these little slots right here. One, two, three, four, and then all the way down this side. These slots match these grooves on the tank. Now you can line those up like so, and then there's no seam inside there. Pretty clever. If by chance they don't line up perfectly, you can make them a little bigger if you want, or you can just kind of gently press those into there like so. If you've painted it and there's a little paint obstructing your your way, you can just take a knife and just kind of gently clean that out a little bit, get the paint out of there like so. We're not handling this real hard. We're handling, handling it a bit gentle. And then we're going to stick it back on the tank and see how we like it. How high should this be on the tank? I'm not exactly certain how high that should be, to be perfectly honest with you. I wish I could tell you something a little bit smarter. So what I've been doing is I've been gauging it with these back handrails here. When this back handrail is touching this bumper, that's the position I want it on the tank. Is right there so that touches that back bumper. This I'll come in and just clip shorter and then it will also be on the tank or on this flat part. Once I'm satisfied or once you're satisfied, you have it where you want it. Take a little bit of glue right here. At these slots, you don't need a lot. You're not going to play with this. You're probably just going to pull it around your layout a couple times or on your desk. And you're not going to handle it much, so you don't need a ton of glue. Um, this is my favorite glue in the world. This is also for sale in my store. If, you're, if you don't know what kind of glue to use, this is what I prefer. And like I said, it's for sale in my store. Okay. 
Okay, that's where I want it. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of Instaset right there. I also sell Instaset. I'm a believer in this product. This is uh, in a syringe, so I can place it right where I want it. Right there, put a drop. Okay, want to make sure we keep this level across our trailer and our tank. You can see the front end here is dipping just a little bit. So we can position that where we want it. And voila, we are, we are just about done. Okay, at the back of this tank, if you make a mistake and you position this too far down, and you'll notice right here, if we push this handrail down like so, it actually bumps up against our bumper. Well, doggone it, no worries. Just come in here and just give it a little trim. Don't take off too much. Just Or if you don't want to even bother trimming it, you can just push it up like so. And it's ready to go. We'll trim this one just a little bit. And done. See how it's touching right there? That's what we want. I'm going to go ahead and clean off. I'm going to try and trim off a little bit more of those. I guess I'm not going to be able to. Okay. There. I'm going to try and trim that just a little bit more. There. Okay. Now, I like to glue those in place. And I'll show you how I like to do that. What I do is I take a little bit of this glue on the edge of my knife and then I just kind of touch it right there. We're not pouring concrete guys so you don't need a whole lot right there. You just need a little a little taste. Your trailer is essentially done. Now my trailer kits do come with DOT tape so you can come in and put DOT tape down the side. There are holes here for lights and we'll go ahead and add some of that detail quick. I like to use paint pens. These are, you can buy them on Amazon, hobby stores. You can even find different brands of this at Walmart or, or other discount type store. You can use a Sharpie if you don't want to spend money. If you've got Sharpies around the house and you don't want to spend money on paint pens, uh, as long as you have a really fine tip Sharpie or other type of marker, fine tip is really what you're looking for. And uh, you can use that. Just something to give those lights a little color. There you go. Let me turn this so you can see a little better. And to be honest, again, I'm not real sure what these colors, what these light colors should be. I know some are orange and whatnot. But on your trailer, make them whatever color you want. There are three lights across the, or two lights here and two lights there. Um, if you put your, if you do the lights first and then put your catwalk on, it's a lot easier. Now you got to see how steady I am. And if you're wondering, I have a little bit of paint right here on this lid that I'm dipping into. And 
And then I'm going to try and weasel in right there. All right, I've got an orange paint pen here. I'm just going to put a little orange light right there. And an orange light on this side. Like so. And then there's actually one here at the front as well. And due to the proximity of my camera, I really can't get a straight shot for you. And there we go.